Number 44. Express each of the following numbers in scientific notation with correct significant figures. I see that we have A through G, so like always, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Okay, so we need scientific notation. Now just know that scientific notation is a standard way of stating numbers. You're always going to have a number, a decimal, and then a slew of numbers, so it could go on. Then times 10 to the insert a number here. So that's what scientific notation is. So we have to plug all of these numbers into their equivalent into blank times 10 to the enter exponent. And we also have to give correct significant figures. So there's going to be a lot in this question, but I'll try to go as quickly and concise as I can since we didn't go over scientific notation and correct sig figs. All right. So first things first, let's learn how to do scientific notation. Now it depends. If your number is greater than one, so it's, it's a larger number, it's greater than one, your times 10 to the will always be a positive number. If the number that they gave you is less than one, so it's basically a decimal or a fraction, your times 10 to the number will be a negative value. So that's how you know if this is either going to be positive or negative, depending on if your number is greater than or less than one. So that gets that out of the way. Now we just got to find out what this number is going to be. Is it going to be a plus one, a plus two, a negative one, a negative two, negative 10? That's when we do the bunny hops. And yes, I know it sounds silly, but we're never too old for bunny hops. So let's take A, for example. I'm going to write it down over here. 7, 1, 1 1.0. I'm just doing this because I have more room. And we always want to have only one number, if you see back in this example, and then a break, then a dot, then a decimal. So I have to take this decimal and jump it, bunny hop it, to right after the first number. So I want to take this decimal and I want to put it over on where my dotted line is. Now, how many spaces did I go? One, two, two bunny hops. That's what your exponent is. So I'm going to say number of bunny hops is the times 10 to the number does not tell you whether it's positive or negative. It will just tell you the number. 2, 3, 4, 5, but it won't tell you whether it's a positive 2 or a negative 2. So, for right now, I know that I did two bunny hops, so it should be times 10 to the second. Is it a positive or a negative second? This number, 700, uh, 711, is obviously greater than 1. It's a bigger number. So that means that this would be a plus 2. Now, do you have to put the plus? No, so I'm going to get rid of it. Do you have to put the minus? Yes, you do. So, but it's just good practice to know whether you're positive or negative. Now, we got to put the right scientific correct uh, sig figs, significant figures. So, in this number, you now have the decimal here. So, it would be 7.11. But the question is, do we include that zero, right? All non-zeros are significant, meaning that you have to count them. There's a significant, there are a slew of rules, there's like I think three or four rules, about zeros. This zero, in this case, I'm going to make it a different color, this zero right here is called a trailing zero. Trailing zeros, and we're probably going to see them a lot, trailing zeros only occur if it's the last number after all of your non-zeros, a.k.a. 1 through 9. So, since this is the last zero and it's after all of our non-zeros, it's a trailing zero. And the rule is, trailing zeros only count, so I'm going to put TZ, trailing zeros, only count if you see a decimal. I don't care where that decimal is, 
If you see a decimal, they count. So this zero has to count. So I do have to include that zero there. So that would be the correct scientific notation with the correct significant figures for this one. 7.110 times 10 to the second. Moving on to B. So A is done. B, 0 0.239. All right, well, we know that we need to get our scientific notation after the first number. That's a non-zero, a.k.a. 1 through 9. And it looks like it would be right here. So let's bunny hop it to see how many numbers we got. The decimal's right here. One. So this would be times 10 to the one. Is it a positive? Is it a negative? This number is less than one. So that means it should be times 10 to the negative one. And now when we do that, it will be two point, because now the decimal's right here, 2.39. Now you're probably saying, here's another game, right? There's a zero right here. This zero is in the front. Do you see the difference between the zero in A and the zero in B? The zero in A was at the end. Therefore, it's called a trailing zero. The zero in B is in the front. Therefore, these are called leading zeros. And I'm going to say LZ, leading zeros, never count. No exceptions. That's it. They never count. So you do not put that zero in your answer. So I'm going to box this answer off. That would be the answer for B. I'm going to box this answer off. That's the answer for A. Okay, so B is good. Now let's keep going. C. 90,743. The first thing you got to figure out is where is the decimal? There's absolutely no decimal here. If there's no decimal, it's assumed that it's all the way at the end. So it's right here. Where do we got to hop to? We always got to hop to the first number and then that divider. So we're going to hop here. How many bunny hops? One, two, three, and four. So this should be times 10 to the four, positive or negative. This number is definitely greater than one. So therefore, it's a positive. You don't have to incorporate the positive. But now, we just have to include all the right sig figs. Now, where is there a zero here? Ah, this zero is in the middle. So this is a really good example because we got one at the end, one in the front, and now we got a middle one. So I'm going to just say this one is in the middle. There's really no... Um, terminology for the zeros that are in the middle. I just like to call them trapped. T-R-A-P-P-E-D? Sure. <laughs> um, so these zeros are trapped between always non-zeros, aka 1 through 9. So it's trapped between a 9 on this side, and it's trapped between a 7 on z this side. So your middle zeros or your trap zeros zeros, I'll put a slash there to mean zero, they always count. No exceptions. So this zero, since it's trapped between two non-zeros, I have to incorporate it. So it would be nine, new decimal here, zero, seven, four, three, because all non-zeros always count. And there you go. Letter D. 134.2. Okay, we see the decimal. We know that the new one for scientific notation has to be here. How many bunny hops? One, two. So this would be times 10 to the second, positive or negative. This number is greater than one. So it has to be a positive two. They're all non-zeros, so they all count. 1.34. There's your answer. Look at you guys, you're getting so fast at this. Done with that one. Letter E, 0 0.05499. We always want to be, the new decimal always wants to be right next to the first non-zero, and I'm just going to specify that. This one has to be a non-zero, a.k.a. it has to be 1 through 9. So the first non-zero that I see here is 5, 
So my new decimal wants to be in between the 5 and the 4. So let's bunny hop it. The, the zero's right here. How many? 1 and 2. So it'd be times 10 to the second, positive or negative, this number is less than 1. So that means it has to be a negative 2. Now, do these zeros count? What are they? Come on, tell me, guys. These are leading zeros, right? They're in the beginning. So I'm just going to put LZ. And do leading zeros count? Leading zeros never count. So we don't include those. So these would just be 5.499. And that's your answer. Two more. F. Um, looks like 10,000. One, two, three, decimal, zero. Okay. Where is my new decimal going to be in scientific notation? It's going to be right after the first non-zero, which is the one. So how many bunny hops? One, two, three, four. New decimal goes there. So times 10 to the four, positive or negative, this number is greater than one. So it has to be a positive. You don't have to write the positive, though. Now, look at all these zeros. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. These are all classified as what? These would be trailing zeros because they're at the end. And what was the rule for trailing zeros? Trailing zeros only count if you see a decimal. And remember, I don't care where the decimal is. If you see a decimal, they count. Did we see a decimal in the beginning? Yeah, it was, it was right here. So they all count, which means that you have to include all of them. So this new number would be one point, and now you've got to add all of these zeros. Zero, 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 zero. Oop, I don't know. There you go. I think one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That's it. Cross this off. Awesome job. Last one. Ooh, this one is a killer. Let's see. How many zeros is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, three, eight, five, nine, two. They just wanted to do this too. They're like, end on a good note. <laughs> okay. So where's the decimal right now? Right here. And where does the decimal want to be in scientific notation? Right after the first non-zero, which is the seven. So let's do the bunny hops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's where the new decimal is going to be. So times 10 to the seventh, positive or negative, this is less than one, which means that it has to be a negative number. Now, do we include all of these zeros? This one, this one, this one. What are these classified as? They are leading zeros. So I'll just say LZ. Do leading zeros count? They never count. So I don't put them in there. So I will just start with the 7. So now it would be 7 with a decimal. 3, 8, 5, 9, 2 times 10 to the negative 7th. Now, I just want to make clear that these numbers, all the ones that we've seen before we turned into them, are, is the same exact number. We didn't do any math. We didn't do any subtraction, multiplying, dividing. It's the same exact number. It's just a different representation of them. A lot of students think that since you put into scientific notation, they're a different number, but they are not. It's just two different ways of saying the same exact number. All right, guys, I hope this helped a lot. If it did, click that subscribe button. We got scientific notation, sig figs, conversions, stoichiometry, everything for chemistry. We got the whole textbook coming your way. So hit that subscribe button. It would help us out a lot, and you would get to know when we do all the answers for you guys. So that would be kind of cool. I got, um, <laughs> yeah. But other than that, guys, happy studying. Hope this helped. Have a great day. See you all next time. Bye-bye.